for more on the story, we can bring in France 24's Catherine Norris Trent, who filmed that report for us. Welcome back, Catherine. Firstly, what were your impressions going to Sweden, you know, after the summer we've had here in France with uh, social distancing and the masks and the rules that keep changing? Well, it's really funny you should you should say that, Delana, because it's only just, you know, a few hours flight away across Europe. But getting off the plane in Stockholm, you really feel like you're in another world. First of all, there are no face masks in sight. They're not compulsory at all inside and outside and they're not even recommended by the public health authorities and most people there say yeah we don't think we really need them there are small groups of people who, who do believe everyone should be wearing face masks and they do small protests every weekend but they're in a minority at the moment um, Sweden did not ever impose a lockdown a legally enforced lockdown we saw it in a lot of countries there was no stay-at-home order there were no fines things like that but they did call on people to work from home and to stay at home where possible. And in March and April, a lot of people came off the streets. So people were telling us that at that time, the central Stockholm was deserted because people follow instructions. People follow the rules. There's a lot of cultural differences, I guess, between northern and southern Europe. People are more socially distant. And in the whole, they were really trying to respect that. So it's, it's kind of more nuanced than you might think. Mm. Schools never closed down. Restaurants never closed down. You had to be seated at a table. For example, concerts and things like that are hit hard. You've got venues, inside venues are limited to 50. So there are a few rules, but not that many compared to other places. You know, when when authorities enforce lockdowns, clearly they are listening to the healthcare mm -hmm. professionals. I want to ask you, what do the health professionals in Sweden who you spoke with think uh, of how the government handled the situation? Well, this is so interesting. I'm really glad we're talking about this because actually the Swedish government has passed over the decision making to the scientists, to the public health authority. So a group of scientists who are in charge of overseeing this. So it's become depoliticized. It's not like in the US or even to a lesser extent in France or the UK where this is politicised. In Sweden, people say they're listening to the science. And if you ask people on the streets, they say, well, I don't have an opinion, but I'm letting the experts decide. Having said that, there is a massive divide between scientists and it's actually got quite bitter. There is this, that the Public Health Authority, headed up by a man who's become something of a superstar in Sweden. You know, there are posters of him. For One man even, even got, got a tattoo, his, a tattoo I of his that. face yeah. in his arm. This man is called Dr. Anders Tegnell. We sat down with him. My colleague, James Andre, interviewed him while we were in Sweden and he has been the man spearheading uh, Sweden's approach. We can actually take a listen to what how he thinks it's gone. I think at the moment we are very happy with the strategy. Uh, the number of cases has fallen in Sweden during the last couple of months. We are now down to very low levels, uh, lower levels than most countries in Europe actually right now. Our mortality has gone down to almost zero. We have very few cases in intensive care and almost no cases in our hospitals anymore. Uh, so right now we are quite happy. Uh, and we are heading into the, the fall with some confidence. So he says he's happy with how it's gone. But a lot of other people aren't. There are a group of prominent scientists, doctors, virologists, who've been speaking out right since the beginning of coronavirus. And in fact, uh, 22 of them published an open letter really criticising Anders Tegnell's approach there. Um, we caught up with one of them as well in Stockholm. And he was extremely critical, especially, he said, of how Swedish authorities failed to look after, his words, the elderly population who died in greater numbers, much greater numbers than in neighbouring countries. We can uh, listen to this uh, critic now. They didn't try to save the lives of them. They were scared that the intensive care units would be overwhelmed and uh, you couldn't take care of young people uh, who were deadly sick. And so they were, they were selecting a, a bit too harshly, I think. So there is debate going on in Sweden, but it's kind of among the scientists rather than the politicians. But it has been very divisive. And if you look at the, the, the death tolls per capita, which have dropped off now, but the total figures, it is around 10 times higher per capita than in Sweden's Nordic neighbours, Finland and Norway. Now, OK, so that's how the healthcare professionals, obviously, there's this divide. What about the public as a whole? Well, a lot of people, when you ask them, they say that they're pretty confident in how authorities have handled this. People do have doubts because of the high death toll that was seen earlier mm. in the pandemic. But overall, there's a, a kind of 
careful confidence that maybe this approach has been working. A recent opinion poll showed that 60% of Swedes support the authorities' handling of coronavirus. People look, uh, are cautiously optimistic about this. If you look at the number of new infections, they're averaging about 200 a day. And Sweden is testing a lot of people, by the way, so it's that, that's not the issue that there are fewer tests. Mm. Their, their infection, new infection rate is down. It is not rising like we've seen elsewhere in Europe. Again, proportionally per capita, it's around 20 to 30 times lower than in France. So they're not seeing a second spike. Is that because they've uh, already got some kind of herd immunity? No one has the answer to that at this stage. None of the experts are coming forward and, uh, and giving a definitive answer on that. But what Swedish people also say, which I think is really interesting, is that they have been living outside. It's been good weather in Scandinavia, mm. in Sweden, and they've been in parks, they've been on bikes. Now, winter is coming, and in Scandinavia, you know, it gets really bad for months on end, and people live indoors, they go on buses, they go on trains, they go on public transport. And at the moment, masks, face masks aren't obligatory. So perhaps we could see another spike then. They're, they're cautiously optimistic, but people feeling perhaps that Sweden has found the right model. That, that's an interesting point you make about people living outdoors, because here in France, we're doing everything. Even if we're taking public transport or taking a bike, you, everyone is wearing a mask. Okay, You can't really physical distance anymore in the train, but we're doing the best we can. <laughs> we are. We're, we're trying. Aren't we? <laughs> we're trying. Catherine, thank you very much for that. Catherine Norris, Trent there.